peeps what up all right so today we're going to be talking about how to create a module now this is going to be the last section on the ng full stack client side so following this section we're going to jump to the back end but before we do there's one subject that we really call a module and using it simplify a lot of the things that we've done so far now i was walking through the painful slow one step at a time way only because once you see it individually, you see how to create a controller and a view and a model and a resource and you know the DAO. And then now we're gonna have this one sub generator that's gonna create all of it for us and then some. So it's best to see the individual parts first and then see how you could simplify the pain. All right, so hence why we did all that hard work by creating our application by hand before using a generator because then now we can use a generator and appreciate the work that goes into the generator, and we also know where to look for things. We know what to look for. What is a module? Well, for NG full stack, um, when we look at the module sub generator, we see it actually generated a slew of files for us. And some of these files you can't tell from here, but you can see like model file is generated, service, factory, and you know, directive and all this other stuff. Now don't worry, but some of these doesn't doesn't matter here for Angular one. But Angular 1 is going to do something very different than this. It won't generate a component file. So the best way to see this is to actually do it. And this video can get very long because we can do a number of modifications that we took like three or four videos to do. We can try and do most of it in one video. So let's just jump in and take a look and see what's generated for us and what we need to modify. So I'm here in the project directory. Same thing. I'm going to run, fire up the application, get it running here. Um, it's going to pop up here in a minute. Um, basically, we left off working on comments. So today we, we want to not work on comments, but we want to imagine that in our application, instead of a feature called to do, which has comments and the actual to do or task, we're going to have another feature application, which we're going to call user. And in our user feature, we can imagine that you have user have setting plus the managing users themselves. So you might have models for user, not only user setting, but for our user itself. So let's just do that. Let's, um, create a new feature directory we can call user and we're going to create also um, a model and stuff along the line of user and then maybe later on we could create settings but let's just start off with user and so the way we can do this we're going to say yo ng full stack we want a subject generator called module and we want <clears throat> excuse me to use create a user and the feature is also going to be in user Remember, the feature is only this directory that you're talking about here within client dev development, this directory. Um, the thing that we really want all the artifacts to be created for is this. So if the next time I run this, I might want to do setting and leave this as user, and that way you can still create things. In. But you should have seen this by now. We've, we've used it to create you know, um, comments, and we were always using to do as the feature, I put it in to do directory here. And that's why we have comment and stuff there. All right, so let's just run this command, see what's created. And so a number of files um, get created, as you could see. And that's okay. Um, we can come over here and take a look. And we can see controller, factory, models get created, a model get created, services, st even style. We don't care about the style, the template. Well, let's start with the template one first. So this is um, our user view. And so we might want to do something like, um, Come on, div, div class equals, you know, container using the bootstrap container um, class and then div and then maybe um, this is user um, listing or something like that or admin user listing, for example. And this lists, you know, like a number of users, for example. But we're going to get there eventually. Um, so how do we get to see this? Let's say the route for this thing is called admin slash user and or users, for example. And right now that's not defined. So we have to go to find our route for this. And so how do we return the route? We come in here and we go admin slash users. And the thing we want to be template we want to use is from the user um, feature directory and it's going to be templates and user for now user let's say user listing 
okay users listing or user list and we're going to come to our template here and we'll rename this and we'll call it users dash list all right in the template directory and if our wrote is fine well we don't actually um, need all these other things this and specifically these two lines that we don't have a controller yet so if that's fine we should be able to switch to admin slash users and there we go we can see this template well that's not very exciting because without controller to back it up we can't do anything dynamic so the controller we want to use is probably user list um, controller and so let's go here and let's call this user list control for example and we call this one user list and it's in the controller directory uh, but we can cut rename it and here the name for this controller is going to be user list controller and let's just make sure so this work and we're going to say self that current user or users for example users is equals to an array of you know users who might have an id one user name bob at email.com and whatever um, admin false you know we don't want bob to be admin i guess and you know true same Sam was also a troublesome user, but now he's learned, so we can make him an admin. All right, so maybe we have something like that, an array of users, and so we can expose that on our template. Um, so user, but of course, before we can do that, our Angular doesn't know about our um, user control, so we have to tell it. So we say user for slash controls, controllers yep controllers slash user that list that control controller and once it knows about that now we can go here and we can say something like um, you know order list in um, list item ng repeat and then we can say you in ctl that users and then we can say, um, you know, see that username, see that ID, for example, and close that off. And let's see. And if we do save and reformat a little bit, okay, it doesn't need reformatting. And <clears throat> if we refresh here, we should see our user. Oh, so you see, so it's ident it recognizes that our, um, there's um, there are two objects in this user list. And so you, oh, I use C here instead of you. Ah, I don't know why I use C. Okay, so save again. And I don't know why it doesn't refresh always, but there we go. Okay, so that's looking good. What's the next thing we might want to do? Well, m the model. How do we model a user? So we want to call this user dash model, for example. And for a user model, um, it certainly want this to be more like this. And of course this here. And so this is really one that really matters. This doesn't matter because this is all internal. But what are the properties and the value? This is a construction function that we return in real. We see that this and we return this as a from the factory, but instead of controller, we're gonna call new on whatever this factory return, which is a construct a reference to a constructor function. So our users we know have ID and they have username for now. And we also know that though this that admin is also another property, which we're gonna make sure is false. And we're gonna say ng, use the ng extend 
function on this that um, when you create a new user and so that's going to be passed in here and so when you create a new user if that object doesn't say that our user is an admin which is true by default it's going to be fault and then whatever it says the username is or id well that's what it's going to, oh, it's going to get extended and we're not going to worry about this validate function for now um, we can always just return true so if somebody were to call user that validate it's going to be true the user is always valid not validate but valid all right so that looks in, that's looking good um we're moving along here and then here we want to insert that um user model so we go user we want to use that here and so we go user and now instead of doing this we can say new user open parentheses m and new user open parentheses and then we close this off with a parenthesis. So we just pass the object into our constructor function. And so we injected that constructor function for creating, and then we, here we say new. So the, a reference to the constructor function was injected because that's our factory, what our factory does. So we know this from before and everything should still work the same way, except a little bit more funky. Ah, but no. Angular doesn't know anything about the user. See the provider? It doesn't know where to get user from. So we have to go back here again. And we're going to say, hey, where's this coming from? This is coming from our models. It's that user, that model. And let's save that. And there we go. It's working again. So, okay. So now we're chugging along. And we could close, uh, or we're getting along at the top there. But anyway, what's the next thing we want to work on? Well, resource is the one thing that we built the last time. So this was a user resource. So you are CE resource. And we're going to accept all the default function. Insert here, uh, fine. We can call it, you know, we leave it as insert for now. Uh, we don't really care. So this one is pretty much um, done, except the name here. It'd be nice if ng full stack would give some better name instead of calling everything user that J JavaScript, even though it's in its own directory, but we'll call it resource. And of course, we know by now that we need to load that. And so resources, or oh, just resource slash user that resource. All right. And then in our controller, we can inject a resource and use it. But we're, gonna, we're not going to stop there because we know eventually uh, what we really want is to have a DAO and have the DAO use our resource instead of us using um, the resource directly. So we want the DAO to do that. So where should our DAO be? Well, it can be here in this factory method. I see they also have a service class here in which they inject dollar sign Q already for us. So let's be lazy and put it here. And all we're going to do is inject our user and our user resource. And how does that change our implementation? Well, so we have user, we have user resource. So not by very much because we know that our new is going to be called on this anyway, I just one time. And that's going to be used by a controller. So one function here could be, uh, let's call it create. So we want our DA, this is our user DAO, by the way, user DAO, yeah. DAO to have a create function. When you go for create a user, you're going to, of course, pass in a user object. And thankfully, we remember that we have to do what return the user resource, whatever the user resource, the promise from the user resource object, the then function, which, well not then, sorry, the inject function, uh, insert function, call the user resource insert function to insert this user. And then we get a promise back. And then we call then on, on that object. Let's leave this off for a minute and then the catch function, right? 
Now we know that since we're returning a promise from the resource object, if we return a promise or a value here, that gets returned to the caller. Okay, so we're gonna re so we do function. Um, and of course, when we do a successful insertion or creation of a user, we're gonna return that result and or our caller of this DAO, the DAO that create function would result, if it's successful, would get that result. If not, if it fail, we can get an error. And in that case, what we wanna do? We wanna return the rejected, see, the rejected error. Okay, so that's just promises upon promises. What that means for us is in our user list controller, when we inject user res, um, DAO, like this, there. We don't remember we don't use the user resource directly. So we insert user DO like this. If we wanted to have, um, there's a list of users, and so somebody created a user, for example, we have self that create is equals to a function that takes a user object from the front end. What we can do is then say that user DAO that create with this user that then, because remember everything is a promise now, function result. When this happens, we can do itself that users that push this result in user, this new user that save it to the back end, or we can catch the exception because remember it's going to be shown by the reject and we can say, you know, console.log it or self that message, you know, if we have a MESG, uh, a property to st on which we're storing error messages for display, right? And that's one way in which we can use our user DAO. It returns a promise, which could be the value or the rejection. And on our user list here, we don't actually need, but let's say we actually create another template called, you know, create user or whatever. It would have all the controls for creating a user and then we would instead call the function. So we'll have a button, you know, button ng click is equals to ctrl that create and you'd pass the user object in there. You know, it might be a CTRL that user object, for example. And we could say create user. Where you would have some input button type text and ng dash model would equal to TTRL that user that ID for that username, for example. So that would be, these, this would be on your create function as an example. Here I'm sticking it all on the listing, but I wanted to show how we tie it in. Now, in terms of getting the listing for our thing, if we were to complete this story, it would be, well, not routing, I don't need routing. It would be on our user resource, we already have a get method which returns an array. So let's close this. And let's go to, we don't need our model anymore, um, but we need uh, the DAO. Oh, we don't need this guy either. So user DAO, where is it? User DAO, I thought I renamed it. User DAO service. Okay, there we go. Ah, I didn't rename it. So let's call this user DAO. See, that's why it's so hard to name these, to find it. It doesn't have the proper name. And so for index thing, we should, you now we have resource, we have a DAO, and it says on our services directory. There we go. And so that's fine. That should work okay. Um, cancel, we wanna save. All right, close it. And so user DAO, let's work on it. So user DAO, we should definitely, where is this function N here? Duplicate it, 
let's call it get all we don't need any parameter and it should call on the resource the get method that doesn't need any parameter and of course users is what it's going to return and so it simply returned the users that it get and of course on error rejected all right so let's see what is this complaining about here let's refresh um so watch your fire in the last five iteration blah, blah blah i'm not sure why it's complaining create all right Uh, insufficient resource so look like my computer is is dying so that's why it's acting up so um, uh, let me do a control C this this look like it's just going on too much and my computer is actually eating up you can probably can't hear it but the fan is coming on so um, I'll close this one and close this one it's not closing so yeah um, my browser is dying so um, I'll just, so yeah, too many requests. Um, so yeah, my browser is, is dying. But anyway, so you get the idea. And so hopefully what you're able to see is that using the module, we were able to have a number of files created for us. And that's how we, we went through and we changed them the same way we, we did before when we were creating them individually. It's just to start a new module or feature, it might make sense to started with the module sub generator instead of individually created all right so i think that's pretty much all we need to cover on ng full stack on the client side the next video we're going to jump to the back end and we talk about the services now so we're going to be closing this up and then looking at um, the express part of how you generate a restful endpoint and all that stuff and then now once we do that and understand ng full stack we're going to recreate our to-do application using ng full stack and just filling in the guts and then we are done. Okay, so thank you for your time. To-dos. Play with this, try it out, post question or comments. I don't mind feedback. I love to have some feedback. Um, if it's warranted, you know, try to improve or if I'm doing well, that's fine. Um, but definitely, even more important than the feedback, honestly, is... Um, being able to have you guys subscribe and spread the word because like I said, I would really like to see this channel grow and then hear from people what I can do to improve. So please spread the word. Please subscribe. If you're watching a video and you haven't subscribed, please do. If you're subscribed, thank you very much. I do appreciate you subscribing and thank you for spreading the word. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.